this uh, a lot last year about trying to create a framework, a structure for you guys that you could use so that you would basically know what shot you're going to hit every time. Because um, that can be very helpful. And what really cemented it uh, for me was last week we had a, a very cool preseason panel camp. Many of you were here. Um, and with a lot of teams, we had a huge breakthrough um, in some of the drills we were doing where they, it was kind of prescribed what shot they were going to hit. Uh, and when it was prescribed what shot they were going to hit, they were able to hit the shots at a much higher quality, much higher level, uh, because they had time to prepare, they weren't thinking about other things they could do, it was just so very focused, uh, they knew what they were going to hit. So what that helped create was a very calm, uh, very deliberate, methodical, uh, patient, uh, you know, feeling and framework and a way of playing pattern. And so it's really hammered home the idea of, well, okay, if I know what I'm going to hit, if I already know what I'm going to hit, then that should make my life a lot easier because I'm going to be able to hit with a better quality and I'm going to be able to find that sense of organization and tranquility on this side that we sometimes don't have, right? Oftentimes it's quite frantic and chaotic um, and we can shrink that down. So what what we've done here is just create a structure for uh, basically how you're going to attack every shot. Now there's wiggle room within it uh, and there's a chance for you to put your Bob Flair on there, your Nancy Pizzazz, right? Your Julia, you know, spicy sauce, right? You, there's, there's, a, there's an opportunity for you to freestyle within the structure. But as far as the shot selection itself, you're pretty much gonna stick to this. Because what we want to do when we're out here, especially in practice, um, but also matches too, is, is actually just make good choices. Because if I can make the right choices with every ball, then whether I, if I, I'm going to get the right feedback. Because if I, if I miss, right, then I can say, oh, okay, uh, I actually uh, need to work on maybe my mechanics for that particular ball, or I need to be a little bit closer, or I, I just maybe need to hit it less hard, right? But we're going to be able to get feedback. If I make the wrong choice, then it's like, well, I really just start to need, I need to make the right choice first before I think about anything else. So if we, could, if we start with making the right choices, then we can start to think about, okay, how am I actually going to approach this shot in a better way? Or I might learn that, hey, I'm really good at this, or hey, this shot really works, uh, and we're going to you know, go down that road, which is a cool road as well. So we'll start off um, very simply with the first shot in the game, bite right, the serve. So on the serve, uh, you're basically going to hit just two spots. If you're serving to a right hander, which most of the time, on the do side, you're only ever going to go to these two boards right here, right, backhand side. If you're on the ad side, you're only ever going to serve to these two boards. Right here, that's it. Once we have that skill, right, then we can talk about some other, other spots and how we might change it up. But I'm going to keep it there because Worst case scenario, worst case scenario, if I hit my spot, I'm going to have the returner sandwiched, squished here to forehand. And if they do choose to drive it, no worries because there's no angle to work with because I'm going to seal the middle and any ball that they hit, any ball they return is going to have to go through the middle, right? And the, the alleys don't exist. There's no winners, if they, even if they choose to drive it. Okay, that's worst case scenario. On this side, let's go through worst case scenario on this side. Right, worst case scenario, I hit my spot, they're squished, sandwiched here, right? Technique out the window, because it's all squished in here. Uh, and impossible now to turn my body and be able to find that, that angle out there. So now any ball, any drive, should they even wish to drive this ball, has to go through me as well. Most of the time, it's going to be very difficult to get this ball back cross court. It's going to be so much easier to pull it in. So most of it's going to pull this ball right down the line, or guess what? I've got a partner right there ready to take the ball down the line. That's what they're there for. So that's worst case scenario. Best case scenario, what's going to happen most of the time, you just find their back end. And if you find their back end, they're either going to give you a weak drive that you can volley pretty easily, or they're going to log. And if they log, well, guess what? You just won the serve battle. Because the whole point of the serve is to establish control of the net. And if they're logging, you've established control of the net. So congratulations. The serve worked. You have an awesome serve. You're going to hold a lot of service games. So that's the that's the serve, right? And we're just gonna keep, we're just gonna dial that in. We're gonna play some points out. We're gonna have two serves so that you have the opportunity to 
really dial in those two spots. All right? Backhands, we're finding backhands, finding backhands. Once you can find backhands, come talk to me and we'll talk about how we're going to mix in the other, the other dot, the other dot as well. Right? The other form. Okay, so that's the serve. Easy. The return. There are going to be four factors, four requirements you want to satisfy to drive the return. Uh, and this is going to be very helpful because this is going to lay a, a foundation for how we're going to think about when I want to drive during the point as well. Because it's going to be the same. It's going to be the same four factors. You get to, if you can, if you can satisfy those, these four, by all means, you got the green light. You can try it. Bring the heat. Let's go. If you can't, right, if one of them's not there, it's a lot. They ain't going to drive anymore. All right, so what are the four factors I'm looking for? First thing is, I want to be taking the ball above net height. If the ball's low, right now I have to worry about the net and the, the technique is, is, is harder because now I need to actually be able to shake the ball. So either I need to put a lot of spin on it, hard, or I need to take a lot of pace off, right? And if I'm driving, I'd rather not have to worry about trying to hit a, a, a soft one, right? So I want to take the ball up high. So it's short, so now I'm coming forward. It's high loopy, so it bounces high. Boom, that's three. And I'm on balance because I saw it early and I did the footwork. So that's four. Boom, drive. When I drive, I'm looking to go calm, 
keep the ball low so they have to volley from down here. So that's, uh, that's the second shot. That's the drive. It's also going to cover the drives in the point. Uh, if it's not a drive, if I don't satisfy those four, it's going to hit a lob. It's going to hit a lob. Most of the time, we're going to try and go down the line. But a high lob to the middle of the court is fine too. If I can dial it in, I'm going to try and go down the line because that net player down the line is more susceptible to that lob given the fact that they are already closer to the net. So that leaves us with, what do I do at the net? I've covered the serve, I've covered the return, I've covered baseline play, as far as choices. Now what do I do if I'm at the net? Often this time, this can be a confusing place because it's like so many options, right? So many options, so many things to think about. Shifting or, or oh, should I hit this one hard? Should I snap this one? Should I roll this one? Oh, I saw on YouTube this guy did this thing. I saw at this tournament I played, this, this lady did this thing, should I do? And all these things are running through our mind, right, as the ball goes up. Well, that can be very uh, overwhelming. So let's just make it really simple and let's keep it to what are the skills that I really need, uh, the fundamental skills. Like if we're laying a house, right, a good foundation, well these, are, these choices, these are the foundation for our house. Are we going to be able to extrapolate off of these? For sure. But let's get these first, right? Because by the way, these skills, you know, we can play cup one tournaments. Like, just take it all the way to that level. From where you are right now, all the way to that level. You stick to this process. It's just about dialing quality, right? So, all right, so if I'm at the net, if it's a deep lob, right, and I get pushed back behind the service line, then I'm going to respect that lob, right? Good lob. It's basically taking my ability to find any side screens out of the window, right? Not going to be possible. No problem. I'm just gonna go soft and deep to the middle. Easy, right? Simple. Let's go soft and deep to the middle. And a lot of times we can overthink this and we're like, well, well, if I miss my spot, that's going to Travis's forehand right there. You know, that's a weapon. Or I've got a lefty over here, and that neutral dot now is going to their forehand, right? That's bad. I gotta try and get the spot. Nope, don't worry about it. Just go soft and deep to the middle. Because if you execute your soft and deep, if you execute that with quality, that's not going to hurt you. Right, the, the uh, overhead I just hit, right, soft and deep to the middle, even if it's a Travis's forehand, like, has he, does he have those four requirements satisfied? Well, he's behind, he's in the green, right? Okay, he's got me off the net, so we're, we're even right now, so he doesn't even, he doesn't, He's got me off the net, so he's got one of them. And if I can keep it low, if I can keep it low, then, you know, it's not above the height of the net. So there's two down, right? There's two down. And if there's two down, even if there's one down, we're not driving. If there's two down, he's certainly, certainly not driving. So it's not a good spot for him to be driving. And if he does, well, look, that's his funeral, right? Because he may be, may be able to make one drive, or a couple of drives, but over 10, 20, 30 in the course of the match, like he keeps making that choice, it's gonna be really tough. Like, I, I back myself and back my team to, to win that battle. All right, so soft and deep to the center if I get pushed back, pretty much every time. Now, if it's shorter, right, it's like, oh wow, I got a short one, brilliant. This is where I get to take control of the net and hopefully, you know, really assert my initiative. I'm just gonna go into a side screen every time, side screen. Side screen, side screen. You go to either side screen you want. If you feel more comfortable going this way, fine. If you're more comfortable going this way, fine. Most of the time, your comfort is going to be going cross court. I'd rather go cross court than, uh, than be on the same side as I'm going, the same screen as I'm going into. But the whole point is, as long as you find a side screen, you're okay because the side screen is going to give you time for you and your partner to shift accordingly. A lot of times, at uh, you know, as we're making our way up, a lot of times, like, the points won't last that, that long once you find that side screen. But as you keep going up the, the cups, they're just going to get it back. But it's not going to come back with a ton of quality, right? Because you'll be able to, they may get it back one time, but it'll be short walk. So you just go again, boom, right into the side screen. They may get it back, but it'll be a short walk. Boom, you go back, give them another side screen. That one might not come back, right? You hit as many as you need to win the point. And if they hit a deep one, they do get a good lock, fine. Repeat the process. Soft and deep to the middle, 
and as many times as you need to get that short one back into the side screen. But we're never going to go into these back screens hard. Never. If I go, if I want to go hard, then I have to find the side screen. I'd rather go hard, rather go hard than soft because part of this this overhead, if I if I get a short one, I have to find the screen. So I'd rather go hard than go too soft and leave the opportunity for maybe that then being able to take it off the deck. So, as we're going through this, right, if you get that short one, just make sure you get into that screen. Make sure you get into that screen. And that's it. That's basically our template. If we stick to that template, then we can do really good things. And what's nice is it keeps it very simple. Uh, it's very simple in that when most of my choices are prescribed, right, there's a you know, there's, a, there's a process there, and there's a structure. There's wiggle room, as we talked about, to, to play with it. So if I get a short ball, and I've been working in a lesson or whatever, or I'm hitting a roller, right? Instead of just hitting a normal overhead to the side screen, I can hit a roller in there. There's room, wiggle room to play with your pace, right? So you want to be going some harder, some slower. Again, not slow enough that it gives them opportunity to take it off the deck but slow to play with that and see how that relates and how it changes the dynamic of the point. There's room to play with how low you take it, right? If I can hit an overhead low and hit into the side screen, that's gonna be pretty cool because the bounce is gonna stay lower. And if the bounce stays lower, then there's less time for them to hit because obviously gravity is gonna push that ball down to the ground sooner than a high bouncing one. Plus, it's gonna keep me out of trouble as far as any drives they might take off the screen. Off the wires. But again, let's not forget, if I go to a side screen, I really have a lot of a spectrum for what, how hard I can hit. It's really wide. Versus if I go to a back screen, which is why we're not going to go on the back screen. If I go into a side screen, I can hit it pretty hard. Because the ball is going to take this screen, move, and then all the energy is going to go this way. Right? It's going to take the ball this way rather than having it go back into the court. So that means I have a lot of wiggle room to play with and stay out of trouble. And a lot of this game is about just staying out of trouble and and deferring risk, right? Let them take on the high risk shots, we'll take on the low risk shots, and we'll see who wins.